In this section, we are going to look at cost bookkeeping. And what we are going to look at is a number of different um, control accounts for each of our cost types. Now, control accounts are just summary accounts um, that record our information for a particular period. There's a number of different control accounts you need to understand for the F2 syllabus. So we're going to be looking at our control account for our material or for our stock, for our labor costs and for our overheads. There's a number of key rules you need to remember in relation to how information is recorded in each of these control accounts. So our first control account then will be our stock control account. This records our material movements for a particular period. So it tells us how much material we have in our warehouse. So our stock control account records increases or decreases in our stock holdings. When we're recording information in our stock control account, any increase in the stock in our warehouse will be shown as a debit. Any decrease will be shown as a credit. Our labor control account records our labor expense for the period. Our labor cost expense for the period will be shown as a debit in our labor control account. What we're going to see in relation to our labor expenses is that they are reallocated out from the labor control account to appropriate accounts. When we do this reallocation, we're going to show it as a credit entry in the labor control account. The next account we look at is the work in progress account, also known as the WIP account. The WIP account records the cost or the costs associated with producing our units. So each time throughout the period we produce a unit of our product, we'll record the costs associated with that in the work in progress account. The costs will be our direct material direct labor and our overhead costs. We will show these as a debit in our work in progress account. Moving on then to our production overhead control account. This account records the overhead expenses for the period. So every time we pay a bill in relation to our overheads, and um, so perhaps our factory electricity bill, our factory phone bills, and so on, we will record that in our production overhead control. We build up the expenses on the debit side of the control account. Now think back to our absorption costing chapter. What do we do with our production overheads? Well, we calculate an overhead absorption rate and use that to work out the overhead cost per unit. During the period then, we charge or absorb 
our production overheads to our work in progress account based on our overhead absorption rate. And this will be a credit in our production overhead control account. So if you remember these key rules, um, you should have no problem with understanding the entries in any of these control accounts. Let's look at an exercise. So we're told a company has the following budgeted information. So we have our budgeted production overheads and our budgeted production in units. Remember at the start of the period we would use this to calculate our overhead absorption rate which would be our budgeted, to budgeted overhead costs divided by our budgeted activity, which in this case is on a per unit basis. So our overhead absorption rate will be 90,000 divided by 4,500, so 20 pounds per unit. So each time we produce a unit, we are going to charge £20 to our work in progress account. Then we're told what the actual costs for the period were, and we're given information about direct and indirect and materials and wages. Then we have other indirect expenses, and we're told our opening inventory value was £5,000. Actual output was 3900 now we're going to write up our T accounts for the period, or in other words, we're going to prepare the control accounts we've just mentioned. So, starting with our stock control account. In our stock control account, anytime we increase the amount of stock in our, in our warehouse, we'll show it as a debit. There's a decrease in our stock in the warehouse, we'll show it as a credit. Now the first bit of information we have in relation to our stock is that we are told we had an opening inventory with a value of £5,000. So that's what we started with at the beginning of the period. Let's look and see what happened throughout the course of the period. So we are told that our direct material purchases were 40,000. We purchased indirect materials of 20,000. Both of these two items will increase the amount of stock in our warehouse, so we'll show them as a debit in our stock control account. So we've got our direct materials of 40,000 and our indirect materials of 20,000. Okay, so we purchased stock, put it into our warehouse, we recorded that in our stock control account. What happened next? Well, the next thing we did was issue materials to production. So starting with the direct materials, we took £25,000 worth of direct materials and issued them to our production department in order to produce our units. If we have taken those units out of our warehouse and sent them over to the production department, then we have decreased the amount of stock in our warehouse. So this shows as a credit in our stock control account. Likewise, for our indirect materials, if this has been issued to another department, then we have taken it out of the warehouse. So both of these will be credit entries in our stock control account. We've got our direct materials, which have been issued to, our, to production. So where does this direct material cost go? Well, remember, when we looked at our control accounts, we said that the work in progress account was used to build up the cost of producing our units. So whenever we 
issue materials to production, we reduce the materials in our stock control account and we send that cost over to our work in progress account. So our direct materials go from the stock control account as a credit, 25,000, and we send them over to our work in progress account. And we will show them as a debit in our work in progress account. So the first cost associated with producing our materials were our direct materials, 25,000. The next thing we issued to production was our indirect materials. So the total value of 20,000. Our indirect materials, remember if it's indirect costs, we cannot link that easily to the production of one unit. So we do not charge this directly to our work in progress account. What do we do with our indirect costs? We allocate all of them to our production overhead control account. So our indirect materials go to the production overhead account. We record that then in our production overhead control. We've got our indirect materials of 20,000. Okay, so we've dealt with our material purchases and also our issues to production. We have a look back up at our stock control account. We're now ready to close out this account, so we need to balance it off. If we add up our debit side, we get 65,000. We can calculate our balancing figure then on the credit side of 20,000 and all this is, is our closing inventory. So this is the stock value we have left in our warehouse after recording our purchases and deducting the material we have sent over to our production facility. Moving on then to our labour control account. Our labour control account is quite straightforward. We just need to record our labour costs for the period. And we show our labour expense on the debit side. So first of all, we were told we had some indirect wages totaling £15,000. And we also had some direct wages, totaling 30000 Now, all we want to do with our labour costs for the period is allocate these amounts out to the appropriate accounts. And the work has already been done for us. For our labour costs, all we have to do is separate them out between direct labour costs and indirect labour costs. Our direct wages we charge directly to our work in progress account. So we allocate that amount from our labour control account over to our work in progress account as the next cost associated with producing our units. So we have direct labour of 30,000. Finally then, we've got our indirect wages of 15,000. So our indirect wages will be things like our factory supervisor sa salary. We cannot link this easily to the production of one unit of our product. So again, what do we do with our overhead costs? We just reallocate or move them over 
to our production overhead control account. So we credit our labour control and record that as our next indirect cost, our overhead, our indirect labour of 15,000. And that's all we need to do with our labour costs. If we have allocated our indirect and our direct costs out appropriately, then these two sides should balance. Remember, we're not going to have any opening or closing inventory in relation to our labour costs. So moving on then to our next account, the work in progress account. We said that the work in progress account records the costs associated with producing our units. We've got our direct materials and we've got our direct labour. The other costs we need to consider for our work in progress account is our production overhead charge. If we look at our production overhead control account, we have our indirect material and our indirect labour. Were they our only indirect costs for the period? If we have a look back up at the question, we looked at our labour, we were told we had other indirect expenses of £45,000. So these would be recorded again as a debit in our production overhead control account. So just putting that in. We've got our other indirect expenses of 45,000. What do we do with our production overheads? Each time we produce a unit, we are going to charge our work in progress account with an overhead cost per unit based on our overhead absorption rate. So we want to show that absorption of our overheads in our production overhead control account. Remember we calculated that our overhead absorption rate was £20 per unit. So by the end of the period, how much overhead have we absorbed? Our overhead absorbed then will be £20 for each unit. And how many units have we actually produced? At the very end of the question, we were told we produced 3,900 units which means our overhead absorbed then will be 78,000. We record this as a credit in our production overhead control account because effectively we have reallocated this overhead cost to the work in progress account. So we've got our production overhead charge of 78,000. And you can see now in the work in progress account, we have built up all of the costs associated with producing our units for the period. We can close out this account now. If we sum the debit side, should get 133,000. We know our two sides must balance. So we just calculate then our balancing figure on the credit side, which will be 133,000. And this is the value of our output to finished goods. So we produced 3,900 units in the period. The cost of producing those units was £133,000. Finally then, going back to our production overhead control account, we still need to close this out. Um, ideally, our debit and credit sides would be exactly equal. So our debit side represents what our actual production overhead cost for the period was.
The credit side represents our overhead absorbed, or the amount of overhead we've charged to the WIP account based on our overhead absorption rate. We do a quick sum of the debit side, add our three figures together, you should get to 80,000. So we have a bit of a problem. We've only charged £78,000 to our work in progress account. But our actual production overhead incurred was 80000 Remember when we looked at Chapter 5 and absorption costing, we saw that in reality there will be a difference between our overhead absorbed and our actual overhead incurred. In this case, our overhead absorbed is less than our actual overheads, which means we have underabsorbed by the difference. We have not charged enough to our work in progress account. So the balancing figure in our production overhead control account will be our under or over absorption. In this case, as we have not charged enough, we have underabsorbed by the difference of £2,000. Our final consideration then is what happens to this £2,000? Well, at the end of the period, if we have an under or over absorption, we need to just adjust our income statement for that amount. So if we have an underabsorption that is going to be a credit in our production overhead control account, so it's going to be a debit in our income state statement expense account. So we have our underabsorption. of £2,000. And that's going to be charged against our profits for the period.